Okay, when I took this intake manifold, separated it from the exhaust manifold, I had mentioned that one of these heat riser bolts was gone. Um, and the likelihood broken off, and that's what it was. But, uh, like I mentioned, I'm pretty good at taking out broken off bolts, especially if you're dealing with exhaust manifolds, it happens a lot. Well, the key tool for doing this are these reverse twist drill bits. Now, they spin in the opposite direction. So as they're turning, they're trying to make the bolt come out. You know, if they stick at all, it'll be in the direction you want them to be. Well, normally, like when I first started this, my first pilot hole, well, okay, when I first took this apart, there was actually like a half inch of the bolt sticking out. So I thought, ah, I got her made. You know, I went and welded a, it was a threaded, so I, I screwed a, a nut down there, welded it on, figuring, oh, she's maybe going to come. Well, it didn't. It uh, snapped off just a little bit over flush. Not enough to try to weld again. Normally, if you got exposed bolt, you know, that works because it heats it up. It helps loosen it up, but, you know, sometimes on manifolds, this stuff is, is like, permanent in there. So... Then the trick is, with the stud that you have broken off in there, make sure it's level, you know, grind it flush if you have to, and then be really careful with the center punch and make sure you're getting exactly in the center of that broken off stud. You don't want to be off at all. You know, it's nice if you can get a stud out and you can see that you drilled right down the center of it. But anyway, that's what you got to do. And there's a trick. You know, like if this is the one I started out with. Well, my hope was that I could get enough of a bite then with an easy out to get it to move, but it wasn't going to move. And there's two types of easy outs. There's these fluted, you know, straight ones, and then there's these curly things. I've actually had better luck with these, because these, again, are a reverse twist. You turn these backwards, you know, you're trying to get the bolt to come out. I mentioned this repeatedly because I saw one time <laughs> uh, somebody on the channel was removing a broken out bolt with the reverse twist drill bits and then running it in the normal right hand rotation and just burning up the bit it finally got hot enough it hooked and then it screwed the stud down in there you know into a spot you didn't want a broken off stud screwed into but that was just uh, obviously he didn't know what he was doing you know because reverse twist means you got to run them backwards like I say, I haven't had a lot of luck with these because what these tend to do, well, they'll work if you leave enough of a wall, if you don't have to drill too big a hole. If the wall is too thin, they expand the bolt and just lock it in there tighter. So I don't use them a lot. I try them, but I've had better luck with these squared ones. There is another type that looks kind of like this, except it's very fine serrations and it actually has a shoulder on it they work pretty good because they'll go down and shoulder on that bolt so if you get the right size and you got the right hole drilled you know there's a good chance of getting them with them i i don't say it commonly what i see is this type which like i say i never really have a lot of luck with but sometimes they work but these uh they'll really bite in there and the thing on is you got to know you know, how much pressure to use because the last thing you need, you've got a soft bolt broken off in there and then break off a hard drill bit or a hard easy out, get them stuck in there, then you really got a mess because you can't drill them. So, use a little restraint on them. Well, and 
you know, use uh, tap and die, you know, because then you've got some control over the, you got to make sure you're at the right angle. You want to go straight in. You'll learn how much tension they can take, but, you know, if these are a hard material, so they don't, it isn't like they're going to, they'll either chew the bolt up or they'll snap off. Uh, and the snapping off, like I say, is bad, bad news. Anyway, that's what I started out with and tried to get it with this one. Well, this one it was. Well, that didn't go, so I had to go the next size up, which is just slightly smaller than the threads. You know, that's where it's important that you really have to be in the center. Because if you're off at all, then you're, you're chewing up, you're putting in new threads and, and leaving parts of the old ones in there. So you really got to be centered. You want it so that, you know, when you actually <laughs> run a tap through there later, you can, you can actually get back in the original old threads. Because once you do that too, then you have to run yeah, the regular proper tap through there. Now, if all else fails and you can't get it that way, then you have to go to a helicoil, which they work really well. And I know a lot of people who jump the gun and immediately go with a helicoil because all that is is it drills the hole bigger, then it's tapped with a special tap, and even the drill is a certain size, you know. And then that leaves a threaded insert in there. You know, you can you screw the threaded insert in there. Well, they work good. They work really well in aluminum. But sometimes you will have then, you know, you have to lock tight them with the, like sleeve retainer when you put them in there. Or the next time you go to take the bolt out, it'll take the helicoil out with it. They work really well. I used to do them a lot in aluminum because aluminum slips out easy and a helicoil makes it much, much better. But... The main thing when you're doing this sort of thing, you got to be right on the center, right on the money. You can't be at an odd angle or, or drifting off, especially, like say, if you have a broken off steel stud in aluminum where the aluminum is softer than the steel, and if it wanders over, it's going to start chewing up that aluminum in a hurry. You know, it'll, it'll just go. And if you're using these reverse twist drill bits, you know, most press drills don't have a reverse on them. So I end up using, you know, my regular hand drill. So it's very important, you know, a press drill, you could kind of line it up, but you end up using a hand drill, you really got to look it over careful and make sure that you're going square in there. But the main thing, got to get it right in the center. Because oh, this will work fine. This I'll have no problems. In fact, my... You know, there's normally a little give-in threads, you know, a little like that. And actually, my new threads are tighter than the old threads are. So, she'll work. I was just lucky that no more broke off. Good as new.